Today we're going to show you how to convert this Nerf Double Strike into this real life Nerf Destiny Thorn Hand Cannon. Hey everybody, I'm Jonathan and this is Damage Darts, where my son Chandler and I specialize in converting ordinary Nerf blasters into extraordinary prop-worthy blasters from popular video games and movies, and show you how you can do it too. If you like what you see on this channel, won't you be so kind as to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, leave a thumbs up like, and a positive comment below. Yeah, you heard it right, the real life Nerf Destiny Thorn Hand Cannon, and we're going to show you how you can make your very own today. Now we plan on making this barrel extension available for purchase on a future website, so if you just go over to our Instagram page and follow us, we'll keep everybody up to date on that progress. Now it'll start out being a made to order, so expect about three to four weeks until it shows up at your doorstep, but that's what we plan to do. And let us know in the comments below how many of you out there might be interested in purchasing a barrel extension. Uh, without further ado, uh, what do you think D2? Should we get started on that tutorial? All right, let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to be using in this modification today is, of course, the Nerf Double Strike. I've got some uh, white lithium grease from Orange Mod Works, but you can get white lithium grease at your local hardware store. I'm going to be using uh, Teflon tape, otherwise known as T-tape. Uh, again, you can get this in the plumber section at your local hardware store, same as the lithium grease. Um, various, uh, my standard Phillips screwdriver and then a, uh, another um, mini screwdriver just in case. I, I always keep uh, multiple sizes on hand to find uh, whatever um, has a, the best purchase on the screws to take those out. And finally, I've got a worker mod five kilogram upgrade spring that I got on amazon.com. I'm gonna show you one other trick if you happen to be on a budget and don't wanna pay, it's only about six or seven bucks I think online. If you don't wanna spend that, I'm gonna show you one trick that you can do um, to modify the power on this without using an upgrade spring. So let's go ahead and uh, get into uh, opening this thing up first. Okay, I've got everything, uh, the clamshell separated here, everything opened up. This is what the internals of a Nerf Double Strike looks like. So what we're gonna work on first off is the uh, O-ring on the plunger. So we're going to pop that out. There's already a pretty powerful spring in here. Start out just by sliding this out. And that is the O-ring. Now what we're going to be going for is a, a tighter air seal around this. And so right now this slips pretty um, loosely here inside of the piston. So there's a lot of air getting past this little rubber o-ring and we don't want that we want to seal in as much air as possible to use all that energy to push those darts out of the barrel so in order to do that we're going to roll off this o-ring like that and now i'm going to take some um just some 70% rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to degrease this area because we're going to use the Teflon tape and wrap it into this slot here about two or three times um, to expand that area and give a tighter seal for this O ring. Okay, so now that we got everything degreased here, we're going to take this Teflon tape, aka T tape, we're going to give this a wrap around probably about two to three times it should probably do it. So you want to take care just to kind of push things in and then if you hold it one end with your finger while kind of working your way around. Just kind of tuck it in as you go. It looks like one wrap. Let's go our second wrap here. two and a half wraps again you can just try this out and if it seems to be too tight you can back it off trim some of it off or add more you know add more you can start another roll um, another roll on there it sticks together pretty good I'm gonna take my yeah looks like it could probably go a bit more let's go around one more time it's actually better to go around more 
And if you find that it's too tight, you just can gradually trim off some of the tape until you get a good fit, because you don't want it to get to the point where it will not push back into the piston. You want to get just under that so it pushes tightly in there and has a really tight seal, but moves smoothly along the inside of the piston. Oops. Just kind of smooth that out. Moment of truth, let's roll this O-ring on. And give that a try. Things are dropping things all over the place, goodness. Okay. Okay, so now that's a bit much. So I'm glad that happened so you can see what happens there. So now we're just gonna have to back this off, probably a full wrap. Trim off that excess. Okay, let's roll this back on. Let's see what we got now. Okay, doesn't want to move too much. It doesn't want to move, move back. So that's still a little bit too tight. So we're gonna go probably take off one more wrap. So it turns out, it looks like this is probably good on maybe one, one and a half wraps of this T-tape to give it the expansion it needs. Okay, let's take off that bit. <clears throat> See where we are at. And again, if it proves to be then you took too much off, you can always roll a little bit more on. That looks about right, right there. That's a good tight seal. Now a good way to test this, put your hand in the front, get a good seal on your hand, and then push. If I can get a good enough seal on my hand. Yeah. You can kind of hear that. There's a lot of air right there. So I think that's going to be good right there. There's a good tight air seal. Because it's really wanting to vacuum up against. There's, you get a lot of resistance. That's a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, you're getting a lot of resistance there. So not a lot of air is slipping past. Um, so that's the seal we want. Next off is we're going to swap out this stock power ring, the uh, correction power spring. Get this rubbing alcohol out of the way. Okay, so yes, this is the stock spring. We are going to change it out with this worker mod, five kilogram upgrade power spring. You can kind of see the difference between the two here. It is a much thicker gauge, and it is uh, the coil is spaced out uh, further than this one, so you get a lot more energy. Woo! Yeah, a lot more energy charged up. You got a lot of give here, and really takes a lot. So this is going to really do some serious pop. So now we're going to slide that back onto the spring post and um, set everything back in place. One thing you want to do as you're putting this back together is uh, just take a photo when you open it up for the first time. Take a photo for reference um, so you know which uh, parts go where uh, to put everything back together. All right, guys, false alarm. Actually, before we get this together, there's one more thing we have got to modify here on the performance. So I'm going to have to pop this stuff back out again carefully because this is the new mod spring on it. Pull the retainer clip. At least you guys will get a view of this or another review of how to take it apart and reassemble it. A little bit of pressure here so it doesn't fling out on me. I'm going to slip that out past the post. Oh, okay. So I'm going to set that aside. One other area we're going to need to modify is there's two little screws right here. 
but we're gonna need to undo those so that we can get, we need to take a, take those posts out of the barrel here because that's creating too much friction um, on the darts. Because again, uh, we did, um, did this multiple times and tried it out and there's a lot of friction on the dart here. So we're gonna need to undo these two springs, or uh, correction, under, undo these two screws. Okay. Da, 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 da. Unscrew that. Drop down there. And then I'm going to need to get in here with some... Uh, actually, I can push this out a little bit with screwdriver. I might try my uh, needle nose pliers to kind of work this piece out. There we go. Oop. It's got a nice tight fit in there. So what we're gonna need to do is, um, this is the air mechanism, that spring-loaded area that does, this is what creates the um, succession of shooting the darts. So one will fire, so they're both compressed, no air is getting there. One will fire off and that will seal off that chamber and the air would be directed to the second one uh, following it. But uh, we're gonna leave those alone, but we're gonna push these little tines back and I'm going to use some wire snips, so I can even, I can even use my um, Dremel cutting wheel. I'll probably do that in just a bit. I'm going to use my, use my wire snips here just to cut these posts off. I do not want those, because as you can see, it goes from thin and it tapers up. That grips the uh, dart a little too much and takes away some of the power from it, especially if you're using some of the other kinds of darts. So push those little pieces back into the spring uh, and then as far up as you can go and bingo, clip those off, get those out of the way. So you've still got the, the seal chamber there, but we don't have that nuisance of the post. Again, all the way up there off that post. Okay, so now we've got this modded, the posts are out of the way, we're gonna drop this back in, get everything back together and screwed in place. One other thing you wanna make sure of is when you're putting this back in, this cylinder that sticks out forward has got to go on the top. You're basically matching the barrel um, layout there. So that's how they've gotta go in. Okay, and one final thing I wanted, uh, I almost forgot to tell you guys before we get this thing back together, is uh, if you don't want to do the upgrade spring here, one thing you can do is uh, you can put a little compression, uh, a little spacer, plastic piece here that compresses the spring further and gives it a lot more energy, a lot more torque. Um, we have, you, and chances are you can try to use a PVC, we did, but that didn't quite work. But you can if you happen to have a 3D printer uh, print one out. You can go to thingiverse.com. We will leave a link in the description um, of one of our designs. The spacer goes down here in the bottom. But there are a couple others that you might, may find on there as well that uh, go at the top end of this uh, rod here. Just to basically a spacer either here or here to give extra compression to the stock spring. But in this case, we are going to be putting a uh, the five kilogram upgrade spring in here. Um, I actually tested it out previously. And it turned out in this particular model, and it'll probably be across the board, you really actually don't need uh, any uh, Teflon tape. Uh, turned out that it was too tight of a seal and things were moving too slowly inside of this uh, uh, cylinder, inside of the piston. So we just opted out on the uh, T-tape. We just uh, kept the O-ring as it was, added a little bit of lithium grease, and upgraded the power spring. So now we are going to get this back together and give it a try. Okay, so before we completely get everything together, I wanted to explain this because you'll probably have some trouble uh, when you take everything off. Chances are things are gonna explode a little bit. So there's a little rain, there's a little spring back here. Well, one end feeds right through this little hole. The trigger itself goes over this post. Make sure this little piece here is behind the hole here. And then the other end of that spring is right on top of this little post here. So that's the way the spring has got to lay. And with that, 
Um, I'm going to attempt to do this. Make sure this is the new spring. It's got a lot of torque to it. So you're going to have to make sure that it's seated in that base. And this is the tricky part because we're going to need to get this hole right here over this post. and the hammer behind it like so and the barrel in place there um looks like the screw is wanting to come loose here i'm going to give that a little bit more of a tightening do not want that Get that nice and snug I believe i'm hoping the other one is too. Yep, that looks good. <laughs> okay, so now we've got everything tentatively in place. We need to put the retainer ring back in place. And let me check my reference photo here. The retainer goes into the post here over these two metal posts. So into the post here, these two metal posts, and the post here. And that will reinforce everything, snap it all into place. Now we have everything secure, and we are ready to put the clamshell back on. These little doodads are tricky and a pain. I'm gonna make sure to get that little spring-loaded Picatinny portion in there. That looks pretty good. And putting the clamshell back on. And screwing everything back together. Okay, so now I'm going to get this double strike prepped. For the barrel extension, I'm going to need to trim off this little tab here and here. I'm also going to need to trim off the these little edges that stick out along the Picatinny rail uh, because I've got the, uh, the fins on either side and that sight down the middle that need to go over the top and these obstruct the way. So again, I'm going to have to take it off right there, right there, here, and here. So I'm going to have my, uh, I've got my Dremel cutting wheel, and I am just going to uh, slice those off. Right, I've got all those uh, tabs cut off and sanded down. I did a little more sanding here on the sides as well. But what I'm also going to need to do is I'm going to need to sand the end of this barrel. It's going to be flattened on here, right here, right here, and right here. So I'm going to flatten those little rims um, on either side. So I'm going to put a little color here. These are the edges I'm going to need to flatten out and make flush with the barrel behind it for the barrel insert to fit. So again, an overview is I cut off the sides of the Picatinny. The, um, tabs on the upper and the lower, did a little sanding along the barrel here, and it's going to need to be sanded on the sides of those rims so everything's nice and flat. Alright, so I went ahead and uh, sanded off. I had to actually round off the ends here as well. Basically what you're going for is mimicking, this is the insert, that oval shape of the insert, that is what you're going for on the end of this barrel so it slides in easy. Now take care to gradually, little by little, do your sanding because you want a tight press fit. This might be a little loose on my end, it slides on perfectly, however I'm not finished with the um, prototype yet. There will be some fins right here that go across that will add a little extra friction and pressure I think to hold that in firmly in place, but you want a good firm bite uh, with the barrel of your blaster on the insert as well. 
So uh, yeah, I would garage, I would say gradually sand that little by little until it's a nice firm fit uh, into that barrel insert. Finally, another area you're gonna want to sand off are these one, two, three little bumps on the back. That kind of keeps the barrel extension from fitting nice and tight and flush against the cylinder portion. So you're gonna wanna sand those off too. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So if you happen to over sand your barrel, as I did in this case, it is a possibility, so don't lose hope. You can fix it. All you have to do is sand down, uh, rough up the edges of the barrel and use some JB Weld uh, epoxy putty. This is two part epoxy uh, with the hardener in the middle and the epoxy in the outside. You just pinch off uh, a, a bit of an amount and just mush it together to, until you get a consistent color and then just uh, mush it on either side of the uh, barrel and then you can kind of, then you can start over and gradually sand it down until you've got a nice press fit for your barrel extension. Next, I'm going to be taking this blaster. I've got the screws loosened up uh, because I'm gonna disassemble it to get the sanding done for the painting. Uh, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna tighten these back down because I've got marked right here with some black Sharpie marker. I need to take my Dremel cutting wheel and cut that section out as that part is um, removed for that uh, Destiny Thorn blaster. We've got that space, that gap in between. It's so gonna cut that out first. Then I'm gonna take it apart, go over it with some fine grit sandpaper and some steel wool in between all the crevices. So I get a good sanded surface for a good bite for the gray primer that I'm gonna be putting on next. All right, so now I've got everything prepped. I've got the, um, the putty, the epoxy putty in here and sanded nicely. Uh, and in this side of the clamshell, everything gone over with the steel wool. Now I'm going to apply the gray primer. All right, I've got the blaster all coated in the gray primer. What I'm gonna be doing next is, well, first off, I modeled the gear cylinder thing, but um, the challenge with this is that it tends to make the gun a little too wide on the side, so my um, backup plan, actually my better plan is to use what's existing on this blaster, and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be taping off right here and along this section here, and that is gonna serve, and actually it's a little better to scale, more to scale actually if I do it that way. And I'm gonna tape this off right here and paint this with the antique gold to be that, uh, gear cylinder on the blaster. All right, so I got the, uh, again, the great primer and then I taped things off and hit it with the antique gold. So there is the uh, cylinder section. And now I'm going to be doing a little bit of grunging on the gold before I uh, tape things off and do the flat black. I've got a mixture of some acrylic paint, some black and some uh, umber, and I've just kind of mixed it around. What I'm gonna be doing is just using a grunge, what's called just a wipe down technique. I'm just gonna be going over these and uh, brushing over them, making sure I get in between all the cracks and everything, but just, just liberally just going all over this. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking my paper towel and wiping it down before everything dries and then leaving behind some of the uh, um, grunge here. It kind of creates more of an oil grunged, um, dirty look to it. Um, as you would see on the cylinder section of the original Destiny Thorn. So I'm gonna kind of just dab some of that on there and then I'm gonna take this paper towel and just kind of do a wipe down. Wipe a lot of it off. See how it's just getting a really, looks really cool that way. A lot more uh, realistic and grunged there and then just leaving behind some of the that uh, darker color in all the crevices there. So there it is guys, a really quick, simple technique to, uh, to grunge up and weather the look of your Nerf blaster. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it to the other off of this clamshell. And then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna be take, I'm gonna let this fully dry and then I'm gonna take some painter's tape and just tape off this section, leaving all of this exposed and hitting that with a coat or two of, uh, coat or two of flat black. 
The next detail I'm going to work on is this little tiny green light that shows up right in this back venting here. So I put everything together and I just took a pencil and sketched in where I wanted to have that light show up. I'm going to take the barrel extension off here. And I've got penciled in. Can't really see that too well. There we go. So I've got it kind of penciled in there. So what I'm going to do is draw out exactly the way I want it to look. I did it on the flip side too. And then I'm going to tape everything down and spritz that area with some neon green like I did here so that when it's all assembled that little green light will show up right here in that back vent. Now I've got it all taped up here so everything's covered except for that little tiny square there and there and now I'm going to hit it with a few coats of the neon green. Got it all painted, now I've just got to take the tape off. So there it is, really pleased with the way it turned out. I did have to uh, hit it with a little bit of white primer first so the green would show up better, that's why I got a little bit of white right here, but that doesn't matter because once this thoroughly cures, I'm gonna let it, let both of these just set overnight and fully dry. Then of course I'm gonna put a little bit of, little square of tape over each of the green light areas and then tape over these areas here and hit this whole thing with a nice coat or two of flat black. All right, so I let everything dry overnight. So now I'm going to be taping off the cylinder sections and this little green light section on either side. With the taping all done, I'm gonna take these out and add uh, two coats of the flat black. All right, so before I go any further on the painting process, one thing I forgot is the um, that spike at the base here of the handle. And I've already got it made here and it'll slide in, but I do need to cut a notch right here. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie, I'm gonna make a mark here. I did measure right here, it's about uh, seven millimeters, the little post underneath here that's supposed to slide on here. So I divide that by two, I gotta go three and a half millimeters in here and three and a half on this side. So I'm just gonna cut a square notch here that this can slide in so everything clamshells evenly around it when it's all put together. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So what I ended up having to do is lining this up and then I just took a pencil and marked on either side of this. Then I took my calipers and just kind of eyeballed it in from the edge of the top piece to the post. And it was approximately 3.04 3 millimeters on either side. And then I just uh, put that as a marker and then made my marks again on the handle. So now I've got where I need to cut and then I've got to measure in three and a half millimeters and make that. Now the good thing about this is since everything's symmetrical, once I make my cut here, I can put these two together, make some marks on this one where it's located and cut that one in three and a half millimeters. Now I'm just going to take my Dremel cutting wheel and carefully just cut the two lines two lines here and then just kind of go back and forth and grind out that area that depth in here that I need and I'm going to do the same to the other side of the clamshell. All right so I've got the notches cut I just kind of went back and forth and um, lined things up made first of course made my pre preliminary marks and then um, just cut it out lined it up, made sure both of them were um, both symmetrical, just kind of penciled in where I needed to make, just kind of penciled in where I needed to make some more shavings and just kept going back and forth until I got what I needed and also fitted the, uh, the spike in here and when it wasn't quite fitting in I just kind of shaved some more, a little bit wider uh, until it snapped into place and then of course went back and lined it up to make sure everything was flush on the other side of the clamshell and voila I've got it all set so this will snap in here and this snaps in evenly on the other side so that turned out now I'm going to continue on um, prepping for the next phase of painting I've got all my pieces painted they turned out great next I'm going to be working on a little bit of the um, weathering effect and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using this uh, Deco Art Metal Luster Rub and Buff. It's a water base. Uh, it's like a, a paste, a wax I guess, but it's a 
again, water-based. So uh, mine I've had for a while, it'll tend to dry out a little bit. All you gotta do is add a couple drops of water to moisten it up a bit and it's ready to go. I already started on this and you guys can see what I've got going on here. I just take the tip of my finger, rub a little bit in here and just rub in some areas I want to look worn. So I'm gonna go through and do that. But before I do, I'm gonna assemble everything um, tentatively together and then I, I've got it all assembled and I can rub, uh, put this rub and buff on here to um, put where I want all of my worn areas and, and I can just get a better idea of it when everything is assembled into one single blaster. Here it is assembled in all its glory and it is coming along great. So I've got it assembled. I'm going to take my rub and buff and a fingertip and just rub in the areas that I want to have that wear, uh, worn distressed look to it. All right, it's almost there. Now I've got all my rub and buff on here. I've got my weathering the way I like it to look. I don't want to do it too much, just light weathering on it. Turned out awesome. Now I'm going to be taking the tape off for that big reveal. So let's go ahead and do that right now to reveal that golden cylinder area. It grunged up the other day. Trying to get it all in one go here. I had a whole bunch of little bits to cut and put together. The look I wanted. Ah ha ha, there it is. So that turned out great. So I'm gonna go ahead and untape the rest of this and then that little um, piece in the barrel there that shows that little green light. And then we should be almost ready to, uh, well, pretty much ready to get all the internals back together and have this completed. I've taken the tape off there, turned out great. There's my little green light on both sides of the barrel. Now all that is left to do is get these internals back in here and we have got ourselves a real life Nerf Destiny Thorn hand cannon. All right, in this next step, I happen to have some worker black Nerf darts. Now, if you have silver ones, you can just take and spray paint those black, but I'm just gonna take the easier out, use my black worker dart, worker uh, Nerf screws here, and then put everything back together so I have that contiguous black look to the gun. All right, I am super happy with the way this turned out. Now all I've got to do is hit this with a flat clear top coat to seal everything in. I'm going to take off the barrel extension and hit those two pieces separately, but that should do it. All right, everybody, we're out here in the hallway and we're going to give this a try out. We're going to be shooting downrange at the Bunker Battle Zones inflatable oil can barricade. If you haven't seen our unboxing review of that, just click the card here and check that out. So we're going to be uh, opening our patent trap door and loading in some X shot darts. Top barrel first, then the bottom barrel. Closing the fin, priming and firing. Yeah, it really pops. All right, let's uh, load a couple more and uh, give it another go. So again, top barrel. Bottom barrel, trap door really makes a, a good ease of use. Closing, priming, and firing again. Yeah, that really pops after those modifications on the inside. So there it is, guys. The real life Nerf Destiny Thorn hand cannon. 
All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed watching the tutorial on how to make a Nerf Double Strike into this real life Destiny Thorn hand cannon. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, just click the double D icon below. You'll help us create more cool content for your enjoyment and inspiration. Until next time, I'm Jonathan, and this is Damaged Darts.